Teresa Beer had already had a tough life by the time she was 16 years old. She was taken from her biological parents by social services and then was in several different households before she ended up in her uncle's home. When an older neighbor, Russell Welch, offered to take Teresa camping to search for Bigfoot, she was allowed to go with him. They went camping and she never returned. Welch had many stories for authorities about what had happened to Teresa, ultimately landing on the claim that Bigfoot took her. Teresa Ann Beer was born on April 16, 1971 to parents Shirley and David Beer. She was placed in the foster care system along with her sister a few years later. David Beer, then divorced from Shirley, filed for custody of Teresa. His new wife, Margie Richmond, was also reportedly abusive towards Teresa. Eventually, Teresa ended up in her uncle's custody in Fresno, California. However, things weren't any better for her. The uncle and his friends reportedly sexually abused her and forced her to miss school to babysit other children. At 16 years old, and when the events of this case took place, Teresa was said to be a slow learner and immature which is very possible given all the trauma she had allegedly endured. A 43-year-old man named Russell Welch was a neighbor of the Beers in Fresno, California. A 43-year-old man named Russell Welch was a neighbor of the Beers in Fresno, California. He was a self-proclaimed Bigfoot expert and was intent on finding some evidence of the creature out in the Sierra Nevada mountains. He was a house painter who mostly lived off of disability checks and was allegedly a meth addict as well. At some point, Welch asked if he could take Teresa Beer out camping to search for the legendary Bigfoot. For whatever reason, Teresa's uncle apparently agreed to allow his 16-year-old niece to go camping with a meth-addicted man more than twice her age. Then again, given the allegations of sexual abuse against the uncle, he probably knew the dangers and didn't care about Teresa's safety. It was the morning of June 1st, 1987, when Welch picked up Teresa, although he reportedly told the uncle that he was dropping her off at school. Instead of taking her to school though, the two headed to Shut Eye Peak, an area about 25 miles north of Bass Lake, to ostensibly search for the legendary Bigfoot. Later that morning, Teresa's uncle got a call from Central High School to report that Teresa hadn't made it to school that day. It's not clear whether Welch lied about when he planned on going camping with Teresa or if the uncle misunderstood when Teresa would be gone. Regardless, Teresa's uncle contacted authorities to report his niece missing at 9.30 p.m. that night. When Welch returned to Fresno some days later, Teresa was gone. There was no sign of the 16-year-old and Welch was hard to locate for about a week. Eventually, authorities caught up with him, but answers to where Teresa was remained elusive. Fresno police spoke to Welch's friends and family to try to figure out what had happened to Teresa. Welch's daughter said she'd seen her father and a young girl, likely Teresa, on June 1st before they'd headed off to go camping. Another friend of Welch's said that Welch told her that Teresa had been taken by a satanic group and was being held in the Sierra Nevadas. On June 5th, Welch's Brown Monte Carlo was spotted and law enforcement went to speak with him, asking about Teresa's whereabouts. Welch was arrested on a previous drunk driving violation and brought in for questioning. Initially, Welch told law enforcement that he'd dropped Teresa off at school on June 1st. However, they knew this wasn't true because the high school had contacted Teresa's uncle on the morning of June 1st to report her absence. Welch then claimed that they had in fact gone camping and that Teresa had run off into the woods with another young woman, which then changed again and he said she'd gone with some other campers. Eventually, Welch claimed that Bigfoot had taken Teresa. He agreed to take authorities to the spot where the supposed abduction had occurred. When law enforcement arrived at the site, there was no evidence that anything had happened there. No clothes, no prints, no blood. Searches were carried out in the area of Shut Eye Peak and nothing was found. Welch also showed authorities the campsite where he and Teresa had been. 
there was a large burned area about three and a half feet wide and eight feet long. Some blankets were hung up in an odd formation, and there was a purse, an off-white bra, a t-shirt, and a camera. The camera had some pictures of Welch playing guitar by one of the blankets that was hung up along with some pictures of Teresa. Ultimately, the campsite that Welch took authorities to turned out to be a staged one. The real campsite was thought to be some 20 miles away near an area called Ghost Canyon. That area was searched and law enforcement found a blue shirt belonging to Welch that had meth in a pocket. Later that June, Welch was arrested and charged with child stealing, a crime that is similar to kidnapping along with child endangerment. Later that year, in September 1987, three days before he was set to go to trial, Welch was released from prison because authorities thought they didn't have enough evidence to get a conviction at that point in time. Welch, nor anyone else, was ever tried for Teresa's disappearance. She has never been seen again, nor have her remains been located. Most seem to agree that she is likely deceased, regardless of which theory you adhere to. If you find these kinds of videos interesting, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for future content, as videos are uploaded every week.